Looking for a crochet stitch that is super easy to do but has a lot of texture, depth, and dimension? You're going to enjoy this one. The crunch stitch is one of my go-to crochet stitches when I am looking for a stitch that has some depth and texture involved. I love crochet stitches with texture. They're just super cool to me. I've actually created many different projects using the crunch stitch. Some of my earliest projects that I've made using the crunch stitch would be my first washcloth and my first pot holder. Now my first washcloth when I was creating this design I wanted to use it in my sink, in my kitchen sink, and I was looking for a crochet stitch that had some texture to it so that way it would help me clean my dishes a little bit more. I have made so many washcloths using this stitch. People love them as gifts. I sell them. I use them. They are just amazing, and they're also great exfoliators if you want to use this in the bathtub or in the shower. The texture of the crunch stitch really does help out in that regard. When it comes to the pot holder, I wanted to have extra protection to protect my hands even more than just a solid crochet stitch. So even though I did choose to double up my pot holders by making two washcloths and joining them together, they are still my go-to uh, pot holders in my own kitchen right now. There's three that I have using the crunch stitch and it's just doubled up washcloths. I've used the stitch in blankets, multiple different blanket stitches. You could use this stitch in other areas such as a scarf, a beanie, mittens would be absolutely amazing. Really anything you could possibly want to crochet, you can use the crunch stitch and it will provide some beautiful texture. The level of this crochet pattern is for absolute beginner crocheters. Yay! That's it. This crochet stitch is just involving slip stitches and half double crochet stitches and a repeat. It's a one row repeat. Super simple, super amazing, and for this beautiful pattern to result from it is super exciting. The terminology I'm using for this pattern is all U.S. terminology, so whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, I'm using U.S. terms. The multiple stitch count requirement for the crunch stitch is a multiple of two plus one in the foundation row because we want each row to have uh, an even number of stitches and we will need that chain one turning chain to get us onto the first row. So multiple of two plus one. All right, the materials that I'm going to use to do this demonstration are just my same, same old uh, materials that I do for all my demonstrations. Loops and threads, impeccable yarn in the color putty. It is a size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or eight WPI size yarn. So nothing crazy, just basic, basic to show you the stitch. I'm going to use the crochet hook H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. And then the other things I'm going to have on hand are a pair of scissors and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in those ends and close off your project. All right, are you ready? Let's go ahead and begin. Now for my example, I am just making a small little swatch so I can get from row to row to row quicker with you and explain the instructions. So starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook. We are ready to begin. So this is worked in a multiple of two plus one. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, plus one. All right, so starting with row one. With row one, we are going to slip stitch in the third chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V-stitches, we have one, two, three, slip stitch. Our skipped two chains here do count as our first half double crochet stitch. So we will be working on top of that chain two turning chain that we have here. Next stitch, we will make a half double crochet stitch. Half double crochet. Great, and then slip stitch. And repeat, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch. That's all we are doing across row one. Repeat all the way across row one. At the end of row one, 
you will make a slip stitch in the very last chain or very last stitch space to close row one. Boom. All right. So this is roughly what you'll be looking at for row one. Can't really see anything yet, and that's okay. Moving on to row two. We will chain two. One, two. Turn our work. That chain two does count as our very first half double crochet stitch and will actually take the stitch space, that very first stitch space. The first stitch we are working in row two is on top of that half double crochet stitch. We will make a slip stitch. So slip stitching on top of the half double crochet and then making a half double crochet stitch on top of the slip stitch. So working that same pattern, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet. You kind of get that pattern stuck in your head and then you just go <laughs> without thinking about it. But the other thing to, to look at is we are doing the opposite stitch on top of a stitch. So slip stitching on top of a half double crochet and making a half double crochet stitch on top of the slip stitch. And that's it. That's row two. Working all the way across. Now remember, at the very end of row two, and I know some people are going to get messed up here and it's gonna trip some people up, especially in row two. You're gonna make your half double crochet stitch, but then it will look like you're done. At the end of row two, it looks like you're done after making that last half double crochet. But every single row for this crunch stitch, you need to end with a slip stitch. So looking at the very end here, there is our chain two that we used as our turning chain to get onto row one. And I have to slip stitch in there to close out the row. Boom. That will close row two, and that will also help to keep the sides of your work straight. We skip this step, you will get that incline into your work and you'll wonder, why is my work caving in? I don't understand. It's because you need to make sure you end each row with that slip stitch. That's it guys. For the entire pattern, we are just repeating row two. Chain two, turning our work, that chain two does count as our first half double crochet stitch and takes that first stitch space. So the very first stitch that we will work is a slip stitch on top of the half double crochet stitch. And that's it. That is how you work the crunch stitch. It's super fun, super fast, super easy, <laughs> creates this beautiful textured pattern that you can use to really make anything you would want to make it with. And that's it. Nothing special for a last row. You're just repeating row two. Thank you so much for watching this with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed using it. If you have used this pattern before, please mention in the comment section below what project you made using the crunch stitch. I'd love to hear the variety and everything that people have created using the stitch. Now this is one of my stitches in my stitch card collection. So the stitch card for the crunch stitch is already located on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com. It's under resources. So if you go to my website and find resources, don't click on resources, hover over resources and the stitch pattern section will pop up click on that stitch pattern section and all of my stitch cards will pop up for you. If you want the blank stitch card, then actually click on resources and you will see the blank stitch card in that section. But yeah, I encourage you to give this stitch a try. It's so much fun. I really love the texture that comes out of it and it's super simple. Work up a little swatch, staple it to this card and have it for future reference. If you had fun with this video, do all the things guys. Like, subscribe, check out my membership program. <laughs> let's keep it going. If you had fun with this one, let's watch more Stitch videos. Check out my playlist I've created just for you right here. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today, guys. I hope you have the best day. I'll see you with the next one. Bye. <laughs>